welcome to the program. Thanks. It's the Joe Pag Show. It is the day after Election Day 2016. It's a Wednesday. Glad to have you along for the ride. Lots going on. A lot of people want to be heard. 1-800-383-9624, JoePags.com. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email. Make sure you stop by there. Scroll down a little bit. Uh, first of all, you'll see Martha Raddatz. Is she getting emotional last night as Hillary Clinton loses? It, it appears so. And uh, also, as you scroll down, you'll see the video I posted last night at about 2.20 in the morning. Um, uh, after Pennsylvania was called and just talk for for, about 15 or 20 minutes about what this means, what really happened and why we're here. Meantime, I want to welcome back to the program, the attorney general of the great state of Texas, Ken Paxton. Ken, how are you? You know what? It was a great night. I couldn't be better. You know, it's a great day in America. And I said this, Ken, before you came on, um, there were no more potholes in the roads today. The the sky didn't fall into (laughs) my driveway. Food was available. People were talking, breathing, eating and walking. I mean, the earth didn't stop revolving because of this. But you by some of the reaction you see in social media and on television, you'd think the world ended. Well, I, it was, for me, it was a watershed election. You know how it is. The snow falls on the east side of the Continental Divide. It ends up in the Atlantic Ocean. That's right. It falls on the west side. It's in the Pacific. And that's the election we just had. No, we really did. And, and as we're watching it, I predicted Texas would go to Donald Trump by 10. For some reason, there are people in Texas who, and, and actually well beyond, the media also does this, Texas is purple. Texas is up for grabs. I, I saw one mainstream media outlet about a week ago that had Texas light blue as if it was leaning blue. I had people calling me saying Texas is probably going to go to Hillary Clinton by one. And, and I said it very firmly. Texas stays red. It goes to Donald Trump by 10. And Ken, guess what? He won by 10. And this is on the heels of of Wendy Davis losing by 20 points to our current governor, Greg Abbott. Did you have any question in your mind that Texas would stay red? No, I never once thought that they were right. I always thought they were, I I just, I didn't know where they were getting that information, but just I'm out around Texas all of the time. And I just did not see the change that they were talking about. Did you think it was a matter of if we say it enough times, people will start believing it? Or do you think they actually had numbers that prove that? Obviously, they were wrong if they did. I don't think there was any way. You know, polling is really interesting. I've I've been around it enough. It's all about assumptions. You can make your poll and say whatever you want it to based on whatever assumptions you put into it. And so if you wanted to say something like Hillary has a chance of winning, you you just make the assumptions and you've got it. And I think that's what happened. It's very odd. It's the Attorney General of the great state of Texas, Ken Paxton. So walking away from Election Day, going in, were you apprehensive? Were you afraid that there were problems? I mean, we heard in early voting, not only in Texas, also in Pennsylvania and other places, people were saying they were voting straight line Republican and the presidency would either stay open or it would flip to, to Hillary Clinton. Are, are you satisfied with how it turned out yesterday and how, how apprehensive were you going in? You know what? I was I was more apprehensive a couple days out, but when uh, my apprehension started dissipating a little bit, my cousin lives in Michigan, yeah. and she sent me a text yesterday morning and said uh, she was at a huge banquet Sunday night in Holland, Michigan, and she said everybody here says Michigan's going to Trump. And when I when she said that, I thought if Michigan's going to Trump. And he's going to get other states, like maybe Wisconsin, the Iowa's. He may have Pennsylvania. I just figured our our chances were winning of winning were a lot better than what the polls were showing and what the media was talking about. One of our first syndicated stations is WHTC 1450 in Holland, Michigan. So uh, you're being heard right there right now. We've got 11 stations in Michigan, eight or nine now in Texas, and we've got stations in Pennsylvania and Florida and all these battleground states. Um, I was being told, you know, two weeks ago by people in Michigan, trust me, Michigan is going to Donald Trump. And many of them were UAW workers. I mean, when the union gets behind a Republican, you're seeing a movement, right? Oh, absolutely. And so I, I, I really thought when we went into yesterday morning that there was a shot. If my cousin was right, which I, I thought there's a very good chance she is, but she's the, she's the one up in, in Michigan and turned out to be exactly right on. It's uh, it's an incredible day because going forward, you've got all these lawsuits that Texas and, and many other states have brought. Lawsuits about uh, Obama's executive fiats on immigration, on Obamacare, which well, I, don't, I don't know what John Roberts was drinking that day, but I mean, it clearly is unconstitutional. You've got situations with bathrooms and transgenders and so on and so forth. You've got situations with individual state constitutions that simply define marriage as between a man and a woman. How many lawsuits right now are open against this administration and how many of them will effectively go away now because Hillary Clinton won't continue what he's been doing? 
You know, it's, we probably have over 20 lawsuits, almost maybe 30 lawsuits that are pending. And <laughs> wow. when I talked about that water, that watershed event, that this is a watershed event for a lot of reasons. First of all, Trump has talked about coming in and, and basically rescinding all of those executive actions and yeah. orders, which yeah. affects a lot of our lawsuits. And if that happens, the immigration lawsuit with an executive order, that is a huge case affecting four or five million people uh, across the nation. So that's just one example. If, if he does that with the bathroom guidelines, we get rid of that issue. That All of this can be resolved potentially without litigation. And then the rulemaking by the EPA can start being impacted by Trump at that level, but also by Congress, because now they can pass legislation stopping the EPA from doing all this crazy stuff. So there's a lot of impact that ultimately these lawsuits that we have could resolve themselves, you know, with without without litigation. The Attorney General of the great state of Texas, Ken Paxton, on the line. Uh, Ken, as, as we talk about what the future looks like under a President Trump, uh, it's going to affect every single state, everybody who's listening right now. Texas has a direct impact, of course, because we've got so much of the oil industry here. Um, Keystone XL, if that gets done, that's great for the economy all the way through that pipeline. And by the way, for those who don't know, Keystone XL is almost completely built. There's just a section that, that the federal government would let uh, be completed because this line goes over a, an international border. Do you see that getting done? And does that take us to a place that gets us more energy independent? And we start shutting the spigot off from from, from Venezuela, from Mexico, from the, uh, Saudi Arabia and the other parts of the Middle East? Absolutely. And what I should mention is, you know, I've been talking about Texas lawsuits, but most of our, almost all of our lawsuits affect other states. And yeah. if you look at the lawsuits that we saw, we have some 26 states involved, 27 states. There's one lawsuit that's involving 46 states. And so all of these issues I've talked about will affect the nation, including all of these energy policies that the administration has, has, has put in place to stop do whatever they can through the EPA or through not letting pipelines be built. I, I think ultimately that's another great thing of, the, of this administration, or the opportunity to be energy independent. It's Attorney General Ken Paxton, Republican of the great state of Texas. Um, as we talk about uh, going forward now and what happens, you mentioned the EPA. The EPA has been coming down hard on every state. In Texas, we've got something called the Department of Environmental Quality, and the DEQ has done a fine job. The EPA has said it hasn't done a good enough job, and Obama has said through the EPA, I'm going to change your life and regulate you almost out of business. How does this free up the individual departments of, of environmental quality in the individual states, Texas included, obviously? How does it change how they function? Will they now be able to do their jobs again and have the shackles taken off? And, and does it help the individual residents in these states? Well, you know what? That's a great way to put it. The shackles taken off, and that's the way I view this. The opportunity is for is there for Donald Trump to take the shackles off yeah. and let the federal government be focused on what the federal government is supposed to be focused on. Let legislation go through our elected body, which is our Congress, and let the states do everything else. And so if they're doing their job, and it's not specifically given to, to the federal government under the Constitution, then leave the states alone. Let us create jobs. Let us do our own experiments. And the states that, like Texas, that are that are cutting taxes and that are re reducing regulation, states that do that will succeed. Uh, Obamacare, a big issue in this election, may have helped push this election toward Donald Trump. Does that need to go away? And if so, how soon? And it, it has to be replaced immediately, right? You can't sort of have people hanging out in, in the middle, not having any coverage. Absolutely. You've got to you've got to deal with it quickly. And otherwise, the longer this goes, you've got high premiums, you've got more people becoming dependent on it. You've got people with pre-existing conditions that are in Obamacare now. You've got to resolve those issues. You've got to get it taken care of. We've got to get rid of it because if we don't get rid of it quick, we're stuck with it forever. And it doesn't work. It'll never work. And you're talking about a 118 percent increase in some states next year, starting in January. And again, if he does an executive order or or if the Congress gets him a bill to repeal it, uh, he'll sign it immediately. And hopefully that'll alleviate a lot of problems for a lot of people. Let's talk education. Ken Paxton, the the attorney general of the great state of Texas, Common Core is uh has been shoved down our throats education is centrally located in in washington dc which is a major problem it's not in the constitution therefore it should be uh, a federalism issue and, and the state should have it according to the 10th amendment uh, how does that look if the states get control of education fully back um a the administration or washington can stop dangling our own education money over our heads trying to force us to do things but how also will will that possibly change the curriculum Oh, I think it, it puts the, the decision-making back at the local level. Instead of this one-size-fits-all in Washington where they try to slam Common Core or any other curriculum down our throats, yeah. 
you can let states do what they want to do. Let their elected representative and their local officials make those decisions. And then the parents have a lot more say about how their kids are educated. And ultimately, isn't that where we want the decision making to be with the parents? Well, I would think so. And, 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 and by the way, the parents also are the ones that are paying the, the property taxes that are funding these schools. It would make sense if we were all involved a little bit in the decision making. It's Ken Paxton, the attorney general of the great state of Texas, Republican from right here in Texas. There are some people in California. I don't know if you saw this, Ken. But there's some people in California now who are starting to, starting to talk about starting a constitutional convention and trying to secede from the country. This is how dumb it is. Um, and, and they, well, Texas tried to do it. A, we never tried to do it. That's not true. There are a couple of fringe people who said something about it. But, uh, it, you know, there's like big money behind this. They're freaking out in California. Uh, they could hear us right now. We've got stations in California. What would you say to people who are so freaked out by the result last night that they want to leave the union? Well, I know that uh, I know that a lot of celebrities have been, been saying that. I suggested Donald Trump to let him use the plane and they can leave tomorrow. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, just show him the, how to get out. Here's the exit. Yeah, yeah. Give him the give him give him the plane. Let him go. Um, you know what? We we settled that 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 decision a long time ago. Yeah. We had a civil war. Um, it's it's pretty ludicrous. I don't think they'll be successful in, in getting it where it's a big waste of time. Yeah, but have you seen some of the freak out today? I, I mean, at the end of the day, you and I and people who are like minded, values wise, tradition wise, you know, Americanism, nationalism, patriotism wise, uh, we we dealt with eight years of a king. As somebody who is a dictator over us, writing any any sort of executive order he wanted to control our lives more. And, and we've got a guy who, you know, we've got 95 million people out of the workforce. We see entitlements up through the roof. The unemployed, the real unemployment rate is in the mid-teens. It hasn't been a good run for eight years, but we bit our lip and we dealt with it. And now we've got a chance to do something more uh, of our liking. Shouldn't they just shut up and deal with it the way that we did? Absolutely. I mean, the, the reality is that this way our country works is the people that get out and work and that, that seek out and that vote, that get to make the, the, the decision on, on what the policy is going to be for that four-year period of time. And if these people disagree with the policy, they ought to be speaking out. They ought to be working for, their, for, for what they think would, would work better. So, you know, rather than complain about, you know, pulling out of the country, why not get involved in the process? There's no better country still than yeah. this country, you know, in the history of the world. All right, last comment. You saw Trump's, um, I'm guessing you saw his speech last night after the victory. Uh, Hillary Clinton has seceded, or or, uh, um, um, she has conceded, I should say. Um, President Obama was actually gracious in his comments today. Your thoughts on what Trump said last night and going forward? You know what, I've looked at his, you know, what he's put into place as far as his his ideas. And, you know, even though people had disagreement over whether, you know, do I like Donald Trump or not, if you look at his policies, for everything from education, talking about Common Core, to to border security, to uh, Supreme Court justice, the list of Supreme Court justices he's put together. I mean, he has a pretty solid platform to go forward with, including uh, tax reform. I, I think there's a huge opportunity, both internationally and domestically, to advance America again, unlike what we put up for the last put up with for the last eight years. All right, Ken, we always appreciate the time and how busy you are. Let's talk again uh, soon, my friend. Thank you. Hey, thank you for having me on. It was really was a special day, and I think it'll. I think even those people who don't like Trump are going to find that America is going to be put in put first, and we're going to be in a position to improve our lives. We agree, my friend. We'll talk soon, Ken. Thank you. Open line now one eight hundred three eight three nine six two four. Back after this on the Joe Pag Show.